Today we will be working on replacing a tambourine head and the first thing you'll need is your repair kit and inside that repair kit you'll have a new head and a large rubber band. I also like to use a chisel or something sharp like a knife that's going to help us take off the old head and then you're going to need some sandpaper. This is a coarse grit sandpaper. This is 80 grit here. This is going to be used to take off the large portion of the material and then a fine grit sandpaper. This is 150 but you can go higher than that. You also need some painter's tape. I have an inch and a half tape here. I also have an inch tape here and you don't need both. Either one will do but it makes things a little bit easier later on. And you need some wood glue. Here I have Type on 2. I like using Type on 2 because it has some water resistance to it. And then you'll need some hose clamps and a screwdriver along with some needle nose pliers and some paper towels. And I like to use a ruler. You don't have to but I have an adjustable ruler here that I use to kind of measure stuff as I'm installing the head and then a knife. Let's get started. The first step is to soak the head. To do this we're going to use lukewarm water. You want to stick away from hot water because that can actually damage the head. You also want to start this at the beginning of your process because you want to give this head time to soak. Generally speaking these heads can soak for about a half an hour before you want to put them on. You can leave them in longer, it's not going to damage the head. But I find somewhere around the half hour mark is good. This tambourine came to me without a head on it, but if you need to take the old head off, you simply just rip it off. You can take your knife and kind of slit it a little bit to get a grip on it, and then you just pull it off. After you remove the old head, you may notice that there is some glue left on the frame, or maybe even some parts of the old head. You want to remove these and to do this I like to use a chisel because it's a little bit easier to handle but you can also use a knife or anything sharp. You don't want to use a lot of pressure when doing this because you only want to take off the glue on the top. You don't want to dig down into the frame because you'll pull chunks of wood out and that's something we want to stick away from. When I do this I like to do it in three different parts. I like to go along the top of the frame first and then you can see here I like to do the side of the frame and after this I'm going to go along the bearing edge and this is where you have to be extremely careful that bearing edge is rounded and you don't want to flatten out any of that bearing edge if you don't feel comfortable going along the bearing edge that's perfectly fine we'll get the rest of it with the sandpaper now that we've taken off the larger bits of glue with the chisel we're going to go in and take the finer bits off with some sandpaper here I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. You can use 60 grit as well, but you want to make sure you don't push too hard with this coarse grit sandpaper. Coarse grit sandpaper takes a lot of material off with each swipe, and you want to keep the structure of this tambourine. Notice that I like to do the top of the tambourine first, and then the sides, and then I go to the bearing edge. On this bearing edge, I like to use an up and down motion because that helps me keep the roundedness of this bearing edge. Next we're going to flip over to the fine grit sandpaper. This is 150 grit. You can also go a lot higher with this. And the purpose of this is to smooth out any of the rough surfaces caused by the coarse grit sandpaper. This is going to allow a nice smooth surface for our glue to stick to. Now that we're done sanding, I'm just going to wipe off any remaining sawdust. This is going to leave more of the frame exposed so the glue hangs on to the frame rather than the sawdust particles. I'm also checking for any cracks in the frame or any chips left in the bearing edge. You can fill in any chips with wood putty and any cracks with wood glue. And also a good time to check for any missing jingles and replace those if need be. The next step in preparing our frame for the gluing process is to tape up the frame and the jingles. Here I like to use two hose clamps. Notice one is longer and one is shorter. I piece them together to get a circle that I'm going to slide over top of the frame. You want this clamp to be level as that's going to give you even spacing around the frame when you go to do your taping and gluing process. So to do this I like to turn the tambourine over on a flat surface and then tighten down the clamp. Next up we want to tape the frame anywhere the glue could run. So here I'm using inch and a half painter's tape to cover the top row of jingles. Now this is a double row jingle tambourine. 
and this tape is wide enough that it covers the top jingle and part of the bottom jingle. If you're using the inch wide painter's tape, you're going to want to put a couple layers of tape on there to cover the top and some of the bottom jingle. After you've covered up the jingles, you next want to take your inch wide painter's tape and run it along the bottom of that hose clamp. I've noticed that using smaller pieces of painter's tape helps with this. If you try to use too long of a piece, it's hard to get it over top of those jingles in a straight line. Now that our frame is prepped for the gluing process, you'll remember that there's a large rubber band in your repair kit. The idea is that you're going to stretch this large rubber band around the entire frame, and that's going to hold the head up against the frame as the glue dries. As you can see, if you're by yourself, this is a challenging task. So again, I like to use the hose clamp because it's going to slide over top nice and easy. You're going to want to practice this move a few times before you go to glue the head onto the frame because you don't want that head to move around as you're trying to figure out how to get this clamp on. So just practice sliding the clamp on and tightening it and then you should be good to go. Next up, we're ready to glue. Here, I like to do the side of the frame first because I can hang on to the frame itself from the top. So all I'm doing is placing some glue along the side and spreading it out with my finger. You wanna cover all open surfaces with the glue and it's better to use a little too much glue rather than not enough. If you don't have enough glue on the frame, that head doesn't have enough glue to stick to and it'll pop off. You're going to continue this process around the side of the frame and then after that you're going to go to the top of the frame and repeat the process. As you're putting this along the top of the frame you also want to cover the bearing edge and then after you're done you're going to go around and wipe up any excess glue on the inside of the frame. Next up we're ready to glue the head onto the frame. You'll notice that your head has a smooth side and a rough side. I like to put the rough side facing up because I feel like it gives you a little more traction when you go to do thumb rolls or finger rolls. This next part I'm going to show you in real time because I want you to see that you can take your time doing this. You don't want this head to move around once you get it on the glue because that'll spread the glue out on the head. We want to stick away from that. Notice that I'm practicing this move before I set it down and I'm trying to center the head on the frame. Once I'm ready to go, I simply just place the head onto the frame and then I'm going to make sure all the edges are flat so when I slide this hose clamp over I don't get any bunching up of the head. Again you can take your time during this process. The glue has a 30 minute setup time and the head is going to stay wet long enough for you to get through this easily. Take your time with it, move slow, and get it right the first time. Now that we've got the hose clamp on, we want to go around and make sure that there's no bunching up of the head or no parts of the head are stuck underneath the hose clamp. If you have either of those, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers and simply just pull down on the head until everything flattens out. Now that we've got the clamp on, we want to make sure that it's level. To do this, I simply flip the tambourine over and I'm pressing down on the frame and I'm pulling up on the clamp. You're checking to see if the bearing edge of the tambourine and the edge of the hose clamp are level. This is going to give me even spacing around the frame when I go to cut the head and it's going to leave a nice straight line. Once the clamp is level, you can go ahead and tighten it a little bit but leave a little bit of wiggle room. We're going to pull the head to make it a little bit tighter and we're trying to remove any ripples in the top of the head and we're trying to remove any bunching up of the head underneath the clamp. On the clamp at the adjustment screw, the head tends to bunch up underneath, so you have to work a little bit with the clamp to get that head flat. Notice also that I'm flipping the tambourine over and leveling out that clamp because as I tighten the head and as I tighten the clamp, it tends to move. And again, I want it to be level so when I go to cut afterwards, I get a nice even spacing on the frame. Now you don't have to do this next step, but if you're really particular and you want to make sure your spacing is absolutely correct, you can take a ruler and measure the distance between the edge of the clamp and the bearing edge and make sure it's the same all the way around. Once you're happy with the spacing of the clamp, we can go ahead and let this head dry for 24 hours. 
If you live in a wet climate, you should be good just to leave it as is and everything will dry up on its own. But if you live in a dry climate, you're going to want to flip the tambourine over and place a wet towel on top of that head. The reason is, as this dries, the head will dry faster than the glue. So you want to keep that head wet to let that glue set and then you can let the head dry. If the head dries before the glue sets, then it's going to pull the head and loosen and you'll have to do this process all over again. Before we let this head dry, we're going to do one final check to make sure everything's in place. The first thing you want to check for are any ripples in the head and those are going to look like waves going up and down. Now this tambourine does not have any ripples in it, but if you did, you would simply take the head on the side and pull it down as we have done up to this point. The second thing you want to check for is the give in the head. So if you take your finger and place it in the center of the head and push down, it should give about a half an inch. If it does more than that, when the head dries, it's going to be too loose and you're not going to like the way it sounds. It's been 24 hours and we're ready to cut the head. The first thing I like to do is make a reference cut along the bottom of the clamp. And to do this, I'm just following the bottom edge of the clamp and I'm not pushing very hard with the knife blade. The reason I make this reference cut is if I'm trying to make a deep cut, I have a chance of slipping. But if I make a reference cut, which gives a little bit of an indent, as I'm pushing harder on the knife the next time around, I'm going to be more likely to stay in place. Once you've got your reference cut, you can then start to push harder and you can get a deeper cut into the head. And you'll notice that as the head starts to separate, you can grab the excess head and pull away from the frame with it. And that'll help you cut the head a little bit easier. After you've inspected your cut and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and remove the clamp and any remaining tape on the frame. Here's the final result of our tambourine head change. You can see that we got a nice clean line where the head stops and everything is glued in place. Hope you found this video very helpful and let us know what else you'd like to see.